everybody, this is Tina Borelli from Epicurie Cloud and KitchenAid on QVC and today I want to show you how I make my pie crust using a KitchenAid stand mixer. So I'm gonna come out of the frame here just so you can really focus on seeing what's going on in the bowl. So I use, I'm using my KitchenAid Artisan uh, five quart stand mixer but you can use any a KitchenAid stand mixer and I'm using my flat beater. It does a great job of rubbing the fat into the flour as you would do by hand. So in the bowl here I have two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add a teaspoon of kosher salt and a tablespoon of granulated sugar and I just want to stir these together here on low. I'm using the glass bowl so you can see a little bit better about what's going on in the bowl. So you just wanna to mix together your dry ingredients and then I'm going to add in some shortening. So this is six tablespoons of shortening. I'm using Crisco sticks here cut into uh, chunks and I like to mix these in first the, um, the point here is you want to get all the pieces of fat mixed in and coated with flour. So you have these little pockets of melty fat. Now Crisco or vegetable shortening doesn't have a lot of water content in it. So you're not going to get that steamy lift as you would with butter. So that's why I'm going to mix this in first and more thoroughly. Later on when I add the butter, I want it to have little pockets of butter that when it melts, the steam from the water content is going to create those pockets, those flaky layers. So I'm mixing here on low and I want it to be a sandy texture. And I really like using a stand mixer for my pie crust, especially if you're a beginner, because it takes a little bit longer, which I feel gives you more control. You can totally make the recipe by hand, you can totally make it in a food processor, but I just like the control that a stand mixer gives you. It's a little slower and you can really see very well how the process is going. So I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit. And it's interesting how the fat first gets flattened out a little bit, which reminds me if you've ever watched videos of how they make croissant dough. They really flatten out those pieces of butter within the pastry. Okay, so here we have a nice sandy texture. Let me lift that up and show you here. So it's just sandy, it's all mixed in, we don't have any big chunks of shortening. So now I'm going to take my butter. So this is 12 tablespoons of butter. And I should mention that I had the shortening very well chilled. First, I cube it up and I put it in the refrigerator. And so you want everything to be nicely chilled, especially if you are baking on a hot day, you could even chill your bowl and your beater and your flour for that fact. So then I'm gonna add in, and I have these diced up into about half inch pieces. And then we're gonna turn this on. And now for the butter, I want it to be no larger than pea-sized chunks. So you can just watch as the flat beater is actually going around the bowl and it catches the edge of the butter and flattens it out and does that working action that our grandmothers used to do with two knives or a pastry cutter to work that fat into the flour. So the smaller pieces are more of a sandy texture and the larger pieces are working in there nicely. So it just takes a few more minutes, which I like because it gives me more control. While that is um, cutting in, I'm going to prepare the water. So you're gonna need about five to six tablespoons of ice water. So what I do is I prepare just a measuring cup with ice water and then I measure it out from there. So I'm gonna start by adding in four tablespoons or a quarter cup and then I have my measuring spoon and I can dip out more as I go. So I'm going to just turn this up one more in speed. We're making really nice progress. It's looking more granular and the pea 
pieces are breaking down. I have some chunks that are a little bit bigger than I'd like, so I'm just gonna go a little bit more. And pretty soon we're gonna have a yummy flaky pie crust. What's your favorite pie to make? I'm gonna be making a strawberry rhubarb pie, and I'm gonna make the top crust uh, with star cutouts. So it's gonna be really great for those spring and summer holidays like Memorial Day and the 4th of July. Okay, we're almost getting there. Let me just stop and show you where we stand at this point. So you can see that nice sandy texture that we have. I'd say just another couple turns and we're gonna be good. You can see it's sandy. Do you see the little pebbles of butter here? So you want them to be just no bigger than a pea size. So I wanna go just a little bit longer here and we will be there very soon. Now the day you want to make your pie, you want to make your pie crust ahead of time because it's going to need to chill in the refrigerator. It's even great to make a day in advance and have an overnight chill and then all the butter and the shortening firms back up again and then when you roll it out, it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful crust. So we're almost there. I just want to get those big chunks, no bigger than about a pea size. So when you roll your crust out, you're going to see some streaks and some patches of butter, and that's what's going to melt and give you those wonderful flaky layers. Okay, so I think we're about there. Let me just show you again. Ooh, yum. So here, you can see it's that sandy texture, and then I have some little bits of butter, you know, no bigger than a pea. So we're ready to start adding our water. And this is another benefit here to using a stand mixer because I have access all the way around. So I just want to trickle in my ice water so it, I'm helping it to mix in there thoroughly. So I can go all the way around the bowl and I can see what's going on. You don't want pie crust dough to um, resemble, you know, too much like a yeast dough, if you've ever made a yeast dough. It should be more craggly, more shaggy in texture. And I think I'm gonna stop there. You know, depending on the humidity in the air, depending on the, what kind of flour you're using, is all going to affect how much water you need to add in. So one test you can do to see if you're about ready is take out a clump of the dough and just kind of see how it's all pressing together there. If it was cracking and falling all apart, then I would want to add some more flour to the mix. But I think this is a good start. Now we only mixed it for a little bit. So um, that's part of the reason why your dough needs to rest in the refrigerator because it's going to help to, you know, spread out that water content so that it will all kind of hydrate more evenly and rest, allow any gluten that form to relax. So I'm just going to take the dough out here onto my silicone mat that I'm using and I just want to press it together here and see how it's holding together. Now I'm going to fold it upon itself and see if it's all cohesive. You don't want to work it too much. And I like folding it on itself because that's helping to create those yummy flaky layers. So I'm really liking the texture that I'm seeing here. It's not too wet, it's not too crumbly. All the pieces are holding together. If it was too crumbly, one trick that you can do is use a little spray bottle that's clean and you've only used it for water and kitchen items. You don't wanna use one that had cleaning chemicals in it. And you could give the dough a little spritz if it was getting too wet on you. But I am really liking how this is holding together for me here. So I'm gonna make a two crust pie. So this is enough for two. 
So I'm going to form it into a disc and I just want to cut it in half or even a little more to one side because the bottom crust, you need a little bit more crust to go up the sides of your pan. So I'm just going to cut that, I guess about 60-40 there. And you just want to form that into a disc and then we're gonna wrap that up in plastic wrap. That is just beautiful. Do you see the marbling of the butter working through there? That is going to give us the beautiful flakiness when this bakes up. So I have my smaller and my larger, and I'm just pressing them flat into somewhat of a disc shape. And then you're gonna wrap those up in plastic wrap and you're gonna give them a chill in the refrigerator. I like to do it for an hour or two or even up to overnight. You know, you can totally make this a day in advance. You can even freeze it and thaw it in the refrigerator to use for later. So this is a beautiful, beautiful dough. I'm super excited to roll these out later and make my strawberry rhubarb pie. So there are my doughs. Let me know if you ever have any questions. You can always reach out to me on my website, Epicurie Cloud, E-P-I-C-U-R-I -I Cloud. Um, but I hope you'll follow and share and let me know what other kind of videos you'd like me to make. Take care, have a great day, happy baking.